I, like everyone else, was concerned with the prospect of a new Indiana Jones movie. Personally, I thought things ended pretty well with Crystal Skull. I know a lot of people have problems with that movie, but the ending was satisfying, so I thought a new film was kind of superfluous. I do really like the works of James Mangold, though, and that's by far the biggest compliment I have for this movie. Mangold knows how to capture set pieces. He knows how to direct action, and the action here is incredible. Dial of Destiny operates under a sort of rising slope formula for its action, where for every sequence, things will just continually ramp up as more and more things are introduced. For example, in the parade sequence, things initially open with a fight within a storage room, which leads to this chase where Indy rides a horse through like a train station. It is really engaging stuff. A lot of action movies nowadays refuse to add onto their sequences, so Dial of Destiny actually stands out in that sense. Unlike Crystal Skull, this movie does make an effort to comment on Indy's age at this point, and I really like that. To symbolize his aging, the main conflict of this movie comes to him instead of him instigating it like the other four films, which I found pretty neat. I mentioned earlier that Indiana rides like a horse in that parade sequence, well everyone else is riding like contemporary mo motorcycles and cars, and this movie is literally about time, so that kind of thing shows a lot of understanding towards the themes of this film. Dial of Destiny is a film that attempts to retain a lot of the staples of Indiana Jones, and it doesn't do a bad bad job at it, but it doesn't really try to innovate with what makes the franchise memorable. The wit of the previous films is noticeably missing now, stuff like visual gags and banter are absent as the film tries focusing more on progressing the plot than slowing down and allowing the audience to bond with these characters. A slew of new faces are introduced, and like everything else in this movie, I like the idea of them, but I feel like they aren't fully taken advantage of. Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character is cute, but she doesn't banter with Indiana, which makes their dynamic kind of fall compared to previous variants. They try doing a short round situation of a character caught Teddy, and like with Bridges' character, the bond that Indy and Short Round had in Temple of Doom is absent here, so that didn't really work either. Matt Mickelson was cool, he's probably like the strongest villain in this friend. Okay, well actually, okay. I forgot Kate Blanchett. Okay, so probably the second strongest villain in this franchise, mostly because the competition isn't like super fierce. I do like how he, along with time travel, are handled. They try going for a more mathematical approach with the concept, so it allowed something so fictitious to feel somewhat real. His presence in this movie was kind of passing, however, I do kind of wish he did more, which is kind of a sentiment I hold for almost every new character in this movie. Dial of Destiny will certainly not receive the shitstorm that Crystal Skull got, but in the larger conversation of this franchise, I don't know if this one has the longevity that the first three films had. Still, I had fun with this, it had its moments, and it never lost my interest even with the 154 minute runtime. I just don't know if I'd be willing to see it again if I'm being honest. Also, I don't know if this is like a hot take, but for the prologue, they really should have just brought in Auden Ehrenreich to play the young Han Solo. Like, I can't be the only one who is thinking that, right?